Callie Morris. Callie, it's so good to see you. Welcome. Uh, Kelly has been a participant with our Athabasca Career Fair for many years, and uh, she definitely keeps me abreast with information from the Treaty 4 area. So thank you for all of your help and support, Kelly. And please, I, I hope I put you as a co-host already. I'm just going to double check. No, not yet. I'm sorry. I'll do it now. And Kelly, you are now a co-host, so please go ahead when you're ready. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. So I will get started here. Um, I will just, oh, I forgot to change the title there. I'm not the student ambassador, but uh, so my name is Callie Morris. I'm actually the student recruitment officer for First Nations University. So my job is to go around and talk to students about the kind of programs we offer the supports that you can do and kind of help you figure out what you need to get into university. Um, so a little bit about my background is that I uh, was born and raised in Regina, but my um, my community is the George Gordon First Nation uh, and we're pretty Southern. We're just an hour outside of Regina. Uh, but I actually went to the U of R right out of high school. I did a year in the French immersion education program because I thought I wanted to be a teacher. I got into the classroom and quickly realized that I was not quite cut out to be a teacher. And then I left school for a bit. I worked a couple of odd jobs. I really couldn't figure out what it is that I wanted to do. Uh, but after a few years, I decided to go back to school where I got my degree in business and mint through First Nations University. So I do get excited to talk to students about the kind of programs that you guys can do and the kind of things that are going to be available to you. Um, so for those who have, um, who listened to the U of R presentation earlier, they probably talked a little bit about the Federated College Partnership, and I'm just going to kind of explain it all over again here. Uh, so we are academically linked to the University of Regina. So what that means is that students would have the support and access to um, things at First Nations University, but they also can access everything with the University of Regina. Our Regina campus is actually right on the U of R campus. It's just across the street. And so we're all kind of like linked and have all of that options. The benefit of coming through a federated college like First Nations University are going to be, you know, having smaller class sizes. Um, you're going to have additional scholarship opportunities. So some more chances to win some money to go to school. We have our own academic advisors. Uh, and you still will receive a University of Regina degree once you complete your time here. Those are just kind of some of the benefits of a federated college partnership. So for our campus locations, we do have three um, of on-campus options there for students. So we do have one in Prince Albert, we have one in Saskatoon, and then we have one in Regina. So we are kind of located a lot over there. Um, we also will try to provide a lot of students with that opportunity for maybe community-based program or some online course options. Uh, so we always just try to make sure that students have access to our programs. Uh, and one thing that's not listed here is that we also do have a traditional um, campus for students. And that one is in St. Louis, which is just kind of outside of PA. So that is where some of our students have an opportunity to have some of that land-based education. Um, our education and social work students will attend their culture camp there. So just kind of a lot more of that kind of unique experience. Now I will talk a little bit about some of the programs. So, so um, you're gonna see that there is kind of an option where you can take some of the programs at all three campuses. Not every program is available at every campus. Uh, and that's just because of just the way that some of the buildings are set up. So like our science program, you couldn't take um, at any really anywhere but Regina, uh, but I will kind of go through some of our specific options. So first up is our Indigenous Business and Public Admin program. So this is for people who might be interested in going into that business area. Say you wanted to do something like um, HR or you enjoy marketing or accounting and all of that kind of options, finance. Those are kind of ways that you can kind of get involved there. Uh, it is a pretty flexible program. So business or program will offer a lot of kind of online course options, some e evening course options, some remote learning course options, just because we want to make sure that students have that option to kind of take that. 
Uh, we also offer like a one-year certificates in Indigenous management. You can have a two-year diploma or four-year degrees. And the nice thing is that they will ladder into each other. So this just means that if you go for school for a certificate, you take some time off and then go back, you don't have to start over. You will just kind of take what's remaining there. A lot of really cool things that students are able to access. Uh, and the next step is our Indigenous Social Work Program. So this is probably one of our more popular programs. Um, so it is a nationally accredited program. So if you go through it, students will be a registered social worker at the end of their four years. Um, and when people hear social work, they think that there's only kind of one specific area that you can work at, but it does have a lot of different options. Students have gone into counseling. They've gone in to be more of that family support. You can even work in maybe like the hospitals. So once families are trying to access resources for different supports, you're kind of more of that guide to help them figure out where they can access those resources. Uh, it's a lot of really cool things that students are able to do. So this is one that is going to be a lot more kind of in person. So uh, you can take it out all three of our campuses, though. So at our Regina, Saskatoon, or Prince Albert one. Uh, and if you are a bit more creative, we do have a fine arts program as well as with Indigenous art history. Uh, so you can do something like painting, um, sculpting, uh, maybe more traditional artwork, if that's something that you're interested in. Some of our students have worked and done ceramics. They've done um, beadwork or work with pork pine quills. So there's a lot of really cool things that students are able to do. Uh, and so for Indigenous health, this is not so much like patient care kind of specific or uh, typical healthcare stuff. It's more uh, big picture kind of policy. And so how that would have like a larger impact on, um, on people. Uh, so you could do the first part of it kind of more distance, but at a certain point, you will need to actually make that move to Regina, just because it is a program that is also kind of done in partnership with the U of R a little bit. Uh, and so there's also something interesting that they are hosting at the Prince Albert campus. So that is our Indigenous Birth and Support Worker Certificate. And so that is a one-year certificate where students actually will get some work experience on being able to work kind of more with people who are giving birth and being able to provide that different support for them. Next up is our Indigenous Education Program. So this is a four-year program where students are able to be a um, certified teacher at the end of it. You can have an elementary school focus, secondary kind of focus. Uh, you can combine that with our languages and be a language instructor if that's something that you're interested in. So it's a lot of really unique things that students are able to do. Um, we have had done different partnerships with different school um, boards. So I know that we have offered sometimes an Indigenous education program entirely at a community so that if you're not wanting to move, you can still get that education there. Um, there's some land-based um, options that are tied to it. Our education students will actually have that culture camp in the winter and in the spring. So they do have a few different options there. Uh, and the next up will be our Indigenous Knowledge and Science. So this is a, for students who may be more interested in that science route. You want to do biochemistry, things like that. We've got an environmental science program that students are able to do. So there's a lot of really interesting things that students are able to access. Uh, this one would be one that would only be available at our Regina campus, and that's just because of the location of the lab. Uh, so for myself, in my first year, I did have to take a bio class, uh, and I enjoyed taking it through FNU because in the class itself, we maxed out at about like 20 people, uh, but the lab actually was a lot smaller where we would kind of cut that group in half. So I had about 10 students that were actually in my lab, and that made it easier to kind of talk to my professors, my lab instructor, get to know my classmates. So it was a really kind of nice supportive learning environment that I had. Okay, and next up is our uh, Indigenous Studies program. So this is something that would kind of go through the Faculty of Arts. So it is helping students to develop your um, critical thinking skills, your writing skills, your research skills. So a lot of really um, interesting learning opportunities. And so some of the classes will be structured a little differently. So I did take an Indigenous Studies course where we talked about 
um, research in oral traditions, I believe it was called. And I actually got to go through the process of um, conducting an interview with someone. So we had to write the interview questions. We had to get the permission slips. We had to record the interview. And then we had to spend some time um, like transcribing the interview. So listening to a portion of it, writing it out word for word, and kind of having a little bit more of that um, real life experience and not just kind of reading from a book and then writing about it. It's kind of getting that experience in practice. So that's something that I really enjoyed about it. Uh, and then even in terms of what you can do with a degree in this. So my sister has a Bachelor of Arts degree. She majored in Indigenous Studies and she minored in Indigenous Health. She's she's worked with like the federal government. She's worked with our reserves, um, um, like uh, Urban Center and done more community programming. She's worked in group homes. So there's a lot of really interesting things that you're able to do with this because you learn a lot of different skills that are not just kind of what you learn in the classroom. And the next step is our Indigenous languages and literatures. So um, the most common ones that will be offered are going to be Cree and Soto. And then our other language options that students can take are more on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, just because um, it just kind of depends on how many students are going to be uh, taking that um, uh, during the year. Uh, there are kind of options that students can take a uh, combine this with education, like I mentioned earlier, with that um, language instructor certificate. So it's a lot of interesting things. Um, you can even focus on Indigenous literatures, which is going to be kind of more of a, like an English kind of focus, but more focusing on Indigenous authors and kind of storytelling and all of those uh, different routes there. All right. And when you guys get to university, we want to make sure that you guys are provided with a lot of support. So we do have our student services uh, at all three campuses. So we have someone there that will help you guys uh, register for classes. We will have someone that will help you on campus to make sure that you're staying in school. Um, we will have uh, also try to provide like a little breakfast program for students. So if you're running late, we always try to have a little bit of snacks or some like instant oatmeal and things for students. Lots of different stuff to, again, make sure that you are supported. Uh, because we understand that you guys are more than just students when you come to school. You have a life outside of the classroom. And we want to make sure that we're able to support you in a variety of different areas. Uh, even things like sometimes they'll bring in someone to talk about financial literacy. So I remember when I was going to school, I did not really learn how to make a budget. Didn't really understand that. I started university. I got my first school check and then I felt pretty rich because that was a lot of money for me at the time and realized quickly that actually it can go pretty quickly. Uh, so I spent it all pretty fast, had a rough kind of three weeks until the next one came. So again, we want to make sure that you guys are going to be successful in all different areas, not just academically. We do have elder services at all three campuses as well for students. So they will uh, are there to kind of support students. They are going to help provide with some guidance, um, cultural teachings. If you just want to go and visit and catch up with them, they are always there. Um, and we also will provide like monthly pipe ceremonies at all of the campuses. So the one in Regina, I believe, is every or the first Thursday of every month. Um, and so it can be a little bit different, I think, for the other campuses. Uh, but again, it's there for students, faculty, um, people who are visiting for the day. So we do try to make sure that we are providing that uh, cultural support to students. All right. And when it comes time to apply, you actually would fill out and need to make sure that you meet the U of R admission requirements. So you want to make sure that you find a program that seems interesting to you. You want to review the admission requirements. So making sure that you are um, taking the right high school classes that you need to get into the program. You would fill out the U of R application form and you can select the FNU University campus uh, and then you would need to submit the application fee and any kind of required documents. So those documents can be, say, you're going into education. You also need to um, fill out a 
education application form, which is basically outlining what your career goals are, why you're interested in education, um, and things like that. So there's something there where it says that March 15th is a priority deadline. So since it is after March 15th, that doesn't mean that students are no longer allowed to apply for the fall. You absolutely are welcome to. That just means since it's past March 15th, you will no longer be eligible for entrance scholarships. So that's kind of the only thing to kind of consider. Um, if you're not in grade 12, but think you want to go for the following year, that's just something to keep in mind is that uh, March 15th will be the priority deadline to make sure that you guys can still apply for scholarships. Okay, so admission requirements. So it's a 70% to get into most of the programs, except for education and media arts and performance um, and the U of R's last CTA. So when we are calculating your average, we do not look at all of the high school classes. We will actually only look at the five classes that we need for that specific program. And if you are in grade 12 applying for university and you realize that I do not have all of my grade 12 classes, that's okay. We use something called your early conditional average. And that early conditional average will use a combination of grade 11 and 12 classes to get you into university. So for example, for business, um, you actually have to have specifically Foundations 30 to get into it. But say when you're applying, you're like, oh, I'm not taking Foundations 30 until next semester, or I haven't finished it yet, uh, but you're currently taking it. That's fine. That's when we would use like that Foundations 20. So we would use the grade 11 version. So again, your average might be higher than what you think it is because we do not look at all of the classes. We only look at the five that we need and it will be an overall average also. So if one's a little bit lower, but one's really high, we kind of take that overall average as long as we can kind of make that work there. All right. Um, and so I, it's not just my job to come and give you guys all this information and to leave you confused and not really know what to do. Uh, so if you think of any questions, you're always more than welcome to reach out to me. It's my job to help you figure out what to do with this info that I give you. So if you're kind of concerned or confused about like what high school classes you need, that's kind of, I can help you figure that out. If you are ever find your way at any of the campuses and want to stop in, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, that otherwise, that is kind of like the end of my presentation.